All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I don't see any attendees yet. Let me, hey, Cindy. Um, I don't see attendees. So if anybody else can see that there's attendees, I don't okay. see any. So, so there's no guests per se. Right. And I'm a guest, Janet. Oh, that's true. You're a, you're a, you're a regular guest. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, regular guest. And Cindy's a regular guest too, for that matter. All right, everybody. So let's um you have your hand up, Janet. Is that to tell me you're a guest or is that something else? Yes, that's what that was. Let me okay. move it. Okay. All right, good. So if we are ready to begin, um would anybody like to uh move to approve the meeting the minutes from October 11th, or does anybody have any questions about them? I moved to approve them. Who moved first? I think it was Pam. Pam. Pam I'm moved sure, why not? quickly. And uh, was I'll, that a second? I'll second. Mel? I'll awesome. second. Pam and Mel. Good. Second. <laughs> All right. Um, and then I'm, I'm an abstainer because I wasn't at the meeting until the very okay, end. Okay, you can abstain, that's fine. We'll, we'll go with that. Um, all right, thanks. So we have a uh, first item on the next item on the agenda is waste reduction under the waste reduction heading. We have uh, updates on the recycling drive. We've got a few things there. So Murray, do you wanna kick that off? Oops, that's not it. Oh, yeah, Murray, you're, you're muted. You're muted, Murray, yep. There you go. Thanks. All right, I'll start fresh. Um, this past month, um, this past Saturday, the 12th, we had the busiest recycling drive to date. And I think um, thanks to the Trumbull Times and Connecticut Post article, um, we were yeah, receiving yeah. quite a positive response. And in fact, I know Pam, you've been um, manning the sustainable Gmail where we've been getting inquiries from various towns as well. But um, um, just a little bit of feedback on um, the black plastic container collection at the recycling drive is very well received. Um, we had three adult volunteers running the drive this month and one of them had to make two trips back at the end of the drive to pick up items. Um, so that includes everything, the plastic film that we're collecting, um, the plastic containers for fridge pour and all the other items as well. So um, there still needs to be a little bit more education to the community about what we are collecting there. I think we've got a really good working list of the items we're collecting. Um, you know, I know we're working on pushing out information to the town on just recycling practices in general, but I think as a follow up to that, we really need to focus on um, really getting this message out because it's such a great event, but if we're getting a lot of things that can go to the transfer station, um, or we're not collecting, um, you know, it's just the people that want to participate um, could do so better, I think, if they have the right information. Um, that includes particularly with the plastic film, we're getting like the paper covered mailers that go in the trash, the all paper mailers can go in the curbside bin, and the all plastic ones can come to us um, at the drop off there. Um, the new item too that we're going to look to add um, is the collection of the chip bags. Um, in partnership with Subaru, they um, partner with TerraCycle, which is one of the paid um, items to collect. So that includes chip bags, and I believe it's also the K-Cup coffee containers they list. Um, so I have to get a hold of them before we roll that out. And I want to make sure that not only are we collecting the right items, but that we don't over collect items and they can't handle it because they somebody's paying TerraCycle. And I know this because when we've looked into collecting these items, the only way we can collect them is if we pay money for it. So, um, you know, perhaps as we grow momentum, that's something we as a team could budget for to pay to return some of the items that we are collecting to kind of enhance the the program offerings to our community. But for right now, we have to buddy up with somebody else. So. Um, and just um, to add to what you said, uh, in the Sustainable Trimble inbox over the last week, there were at least two, one person from Stratford or Shelton and one person from Danbury asking if we would take their stuff. Um, and then as I was standing there with you at the recycling drive on Saturday for the few minutes I was there, 
a guy walked up, I think he was from Stratford, with a container full of toothpaste. Toothpaste. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, so it's, uh, a pile this high. <laughs> so it occurs to me that not very many other towns in our area do this. Correct. Um, so I wonder if there's a way to direct some funds towards this, as you said, because we are we are contributing to the greater good more than just a couple. Hmm. Yeah. I yeah, mean, it's kind it's, of a, a regional effort, but yeah. crumbles the one receiving the regional donations. Yeah. I mean, the black I, plastic is like people hate throwing it out. So I don't know how many you had on Saturday, but it looked like a lot. I mean, if you can picture those big giant plastic bags, I mean, we use the clear ones that we get from Stop and Shop or the Bottle and Can Drive uses. Um, I would say they're equivalent of about four to five kitchen garbage bags. We had probably about three of those. We didn't have it all in those bags, but um, probably two to three of those, I would say. So quite a bit. Um, that was of the black plastic containers you're talking about? Correct, yeah. And wow. that's actually after diverting um, the email that we received. Um, Mel, this is from you, uh, the contact of the gentleman that had a warehouse that he had to close um, for whatever reasons due to COVID. And he used to be a distributor of the black plastic containers and he had so much. I said, please don't bring them to us. Go directly to Fridgeport with them. He said he had cases. I don't know how much. Oh my God. Yeah. So that was a win-win for everybody. Cause I was like, if he just showed up at the recycling yeah. drive, we would have been overwhelmed. But, um, right. Well, thank you for taking that email. I yeah. appreciate that. That's yeah, I spoke with him. He was really nice. So thank you. Oh. Um, and then we could, you know, we could save this for when we talk about the website um, in terms of the recycling drive, but, um, you know, I'll just make mention so we don't forget that we really want to, um, you know, update the town web page with exactly what we are collecting at the recycling drive, because I think that's a great um, landing spot that Pam added to our auto signature on the sustainable email, and I think really just being able to direct people would be helpful. So. Mary? Isaac, do we know if, because I'm not on all the town updates, do we know if our recycling flyer got emailed? No, I just sent to Mari today that um, didn't go out. So I'm just going to send to Patty this afternoon. That'll help. And there was a woman standing there at the recycling drive saying, oh, I put all these in my bin. And I said, to her, I turned to her, I said, that's why we're here. These don't, things don't go in your bin. Yeah. She went, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, Wish education cycle. yeah we could okay. host an event too i mean i know we've tried it before i just feel like there's never enough education it's just a matter of when and where and how to attract the most people but it's yeah all right anybody else have anything on in the waste reduction or recycling anything no? all right let's uh, uh the only thing i would add is that I got an email from curbside composting asking me where we were, if we were going to be rolling it out. To and I wrote back and said, our transfer station really is not set up for it just yet. And they, yeah, came back to me, they came back to me and told me what a small amount of space it required. Uh -huh. And I said, yes, I know. So it just seems to me that, you know, that seems like, a, for me anyway, it seems like a natural Next thing, we got glass out of the stream. We're doing all these recycling events. The next thing is food scraps. And I wonder whether Metro Cog update to the transfer station is. Does anybody know? Yeah, that actually came up at the um, capital meeting the other night. And George, George did give a nice shout out to the sustainable group um, for everything that, that you guys have been doing. Uh, but the, uh, the plan, it is in the capital plan. Looks like everything is starting to make its way, but it's, it's in the next budget cycle. So it's still going to be a ways out. And, you know, it also involves having more space for parking, for the trucks to go through, to be able to have trucks in one side, cars in the other. So it is, it is a fairly large project, but I am hopeful that will, you know, that will be part of it. Um, have they approached the apartments by any chance to see if there's any interest uh, working with them? Do you know, Pam? I didn't ask that question. Okay, just that that might at least... I don't know, it'd be some sort of a start. Um, well, if, if I open that can of worms, then I have to tell them where to go to, and I don't really know that. So if you <laughs> if you know that, 
<laughs> um, I'm happy to direct the person who emailed me. Yeah, we could get that, I'm assuming, through Rena, uh, who the contact would be. When you say next budget cycle, Mary, are you talking about when does that happen? It's in, it's in, and of course I have my ARPA, I don't have my capital plan out, but I believe the transfer station was in the 2024 year for the construction, um, you know, for that phase, not in the 2023. So, right, so that, mean, the, that could start anytime after July 1st of next year, right? Uh, if it's funded. If, if it, it's, it's probably going to be, I'm just trying to think the, the way the way it works, it's put into the budget on a certain time. It doesn't mean it has to be spent at that time. Okay. You could have a like a sewer project, uh, for, you know, funded and or you know put into the the plan in 2019. If you might not get to it till 2021. So I'm not 100 percent sure of of how quickly that can move. But I know George is is definitely that that is a priority. So I see once you know once we get to that that time frame to get that developed and. And pushed out so because it really it impacts them every day so i don't think that's one that that once it does hit the funding they're going to be holding on okay thanks i don't know if this is the right time to um or i don't want to like go into too much on a side note about it but um i did talk to nick from curbside compost and i threw out the idea of having a drop-off location um at an alternate location other than the transfer station and he said it has been done um, I just threw out the idea of the Amazon location being right near there. Um, so I don't know if it's something we want to sit down with him and have a, a brainstorming meeting to see if there's somewhere else that would be willing to host the food scrap collection other than the transfer station. Yeah, I was thinking, um, cause I know Greenwich does that. I can't remember Fairfield also has two locations, but the NIA had come to mind because, you know, especially every Thursday, for so long, they have the farmer's market, which which okay. is, it, that wouldn't be the optimal time, of course, because of traffic, but it gets so much notice because of that. There's so many, so much traffic going through there. So that, you know, but that working with them, with the NIA, I mean, that might be a thought. I don't know, Mel, if you, you've had more discussions probably with, with NIA to think if that might be some, I mean, they, they just do so much community, you know, it, it, with the community and for the community, it just seems like that's kind of a, might be an opportunity. Yeah, it might be. The NIA is, um, especially now the new president, uh, I want to say is, um, oh gosh, I can't remember his name, Joe, I think he runs Pepper's Landscape, owns a Pepper's Landscape. And they, they've they just been really very driven to community support with the, um, the um, oh gosh, what do you call it? Farmer's Market and all that. So, um, yeah, so if you want me to reach out to them as a location, I don't know. Westport might do um, compost pickup at their farmer's market too. Yeah, there's one, I just didn't remember which town, I but it might be, it's- I can check you, with the, yeah, someone. Yeah, I was gonna say, if I'll, I'll even just Google it, Mel, and see if it pops up because one of the things it just, it shows kind of how, again, as Pam was saying, but for this, how little space it takes up and how easy it is. And it's, uh, they seem to be doing very well. So um, that might, at least to bring it to NIA to say, this is this is kind of how it's done in other towns. Yeah, that another, might be another, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say another thought would be Indian Ledge, um, because all the municipal trucks are going through there. Um, and there's a lot of space in the back, but I don't know where you would direct residents to go. Just, I'm thinking about something that would be convenient for curbside as well. Um, mm. Yeah, cause that's, that's, that's true. Cause the, I mean, the NIA parking lot, you know, is, is easy for our pickups to go in there. So if they put it in the back of the NIA parking lot, the trucks could go in and pick it up. And there's that White Plains Road facility, that municipal facility that's on White Plains Road, going up the hill. Churchill Road. Churchill? Yeah, going Let's up go the Churchill. hill. I always call it White Plains Road. Well, it's kind of like White Plains, just continuing up the hill, right? Anyway, it would be great to get something started. I just, 
there would be, have to be so much education done in town about what's accepted, what's not accepted, how to do it. Yeah. And it's not a switch we could flip. Like we, we would need a plan and we'd have to really work hard. Like, I mean, the people in Scarsdale spent months ramping up to their program, regardless of location. So we would just need to make sure that we're working hand in hand with VPW and have a plan. And then, then if it's successful in an alternate location, we can always roll it out to the transfer station in 2024. Well, DEP just released, I think, $5 million in funding for food scrap pilot programs, right? Oh, sure. And I think there was what? Did you share this with us, Mary? I think there was like five or 10, ten towns at least. Yeah. But I they think were... they're all municipal trash collection, if I understand. Yeah, what they're yeah, doing, they're know. doing the same. And I can't remember, was Middletown was the first one. Uh, and I think I have Middletown in my head, but it wasn't Middletown. But that where they separated the trash, like orange bags, um, yeah. was compostable material, non-orange was regular trash. And they were doing pretty much were bringing it all to the same spot, but it was it was just a way to see how many people would actually do it, participate and do it correctly. And they found that it it was it was pretty successful. So then they rolled it to these others. But uh, so I'm I mean, at this point, I think we we at some point are going to end up with deep putting that amount of money in and this many, you know, number of towns participating in the pilot, that it probably is going to be one of those mandates that we are going to see, you know, like the EV, you know, coming down. So it would be great if we were, you know, not on not on the end curve of having jumped through hoops at the very end to implement something. And uh, and again, it's it's, you know, if we can make it so that it's a cost savings, that's right there. That's a sell. And, you know, obviously we want it from the, the good side of it and and what it does for the environment and everything. But on the other side, of course, the town's going to look at is it more cost effective or not? So that always turns into a biggie, as we know, taxes and politics, unfortunately. But it significantly reduces the weight, um, you know, of the of the garbage when you take out all those organics. I think people will be really surprised, like how much, maybe how much less garbage they have. It's thirty five percent. Thirty five. Yeah, yeah. When we did our presentation to Vicky and George, the number was thirty five percent. I think that was two years ago. So it's like the glass. It depends from the town side of it. It's um, how much do you need in to collect in glass to make it worth having, uh, you know, carting the carting fees, basically. So even if it's saying, hey, this is a great result. We took all the weight out of our, um, you know, of our recycle bins with with heavy glass bottles, which, you know, are really heavy. Uh, it does it does it make it worth it or not? So that's why that was one of the pushes is we need to fill those bins and they can't be contaminated. So it's kind of the same thing with the with the composting. If it ends up that it's gonna cost us more money in carting fees, unfortunately, they probably would be against it. That's why it's so, I mean, again, education and really getting people to participate. That's why it turns into such a, that part's so important. Now I'll take my town council hat off and say, I think it's a great idea either way. So. <laughs> How is it, how's it going with the glass? Is there any feedback on <clears throat> how yeah, that's they, going in terms of it's they had they're on yeah they're on container number three and obviously we got a slower start than a couple of the other towns because our bin was delivered late and then when they saw what was being put in immediately that's why we had that delay and worked you know um worked with us for the um the big magnets that were up and and having to put you know things over no, like no milk cartons uh the it, you know it's just it seems like it's a kind of a no brainer if you put one, you know, one informational piece up there, but they had to put it multiple places and they were still having issues. So they that's why they moved that, you know, the container got moved over to the beginning so they can monitor what goes in it. Yeah, people um, were throwing light bulbs and other things in there. Light so bulbs. Stupid. There was a man apparently last week that was trying to put a mirror through the side of it, <laughs> um, milk cartons. And that's why. So they pulled the magnets down. So it's even less of an area to put into each hole. It's, uh -huh. it's, you know, throwing a plastic bag with glass in it. Yeah. So the problem is that they, if it is contaminated, then you lose that, that bin. But at this point, um, it was Jose that was down there and he said, it's, it seems like, you know, it's, it's definitely more people are coming and less contamination. So we'll, we'll have to see, hopefully, um, you know, so it'd be, I, I think it'd be, I mean, it's too bad we can't have one at the high school. And on the monthly drives, have people come and put glass in at the same time because they're already there. Those are the people that want to do the drop. They're educated on it. You know, it would, and it would probably be extremely successful. But the problem is it's Port of Ed property and the space and, 
you know, nobody there to monitor contamination at other times. So, yeah. well, yeah. I, you know, I don't know how much those guys are monitoring it. I've brought a, you know, milk carton full of glass. Nobody's even paying attention. To oh, it's I'm funny because I, I go in and I do, they, they, like I'll come in and it's funny because one of my friends lives in Stratford and they don't collect. So I'll tell people, just give me your glass. I'll bring it, you know, bring it in, clean your refrigerator out. I mean, it's like, oops, expired, uh, things like that. And every time I'm there, they they do, you know, they they come over to chat or they are watching. So, um, you know, it may not, it depends how busy they are. It depends if there's two of them up front, it depends if a truck comes in. But yeah, it's, and again, you feel like, you know, you're spoon feeding. There's so much information on the container itself to say what's right and what's not right, but yet they still have to watch. So, yeah. All right, thank you for the updates. Anybody else on the, in the waste reduction area? Can I, can I have one thing kind of along that, um, just for the, um, not Bay State, for help C. Uh, I did check, you know, we have the 501c3 <laughs> pollinator didn't work out for accepting uh, financial um, uh, donations from their selling, us linking their site that sells the repurposed or, um, you know, recycled clothing and other textiles. Uh, so I did reach out to the um, dog warden and she forwarded me to the right person that runs their um, the tag group and I never heard back. So I'm wondering, do we want to, I was gonna check with Vicki, but see what people thought about perhaps going through Nourish and Bridgeport with Reverend Sarah, um, which is just, you know, I, I know a lot of people from Trumbull do, uh, do donate and, and are aware of her and participate. So I thought if we don't have anything here locally that would work, that, that at least is a, I just think a nice tie-in for, you know, food insecurity in you know our next door neighborhood. But if anyone has any other ideas, please let me know. It's not a significant, I don't think, money, but at least it's something. So what was that exactly? I missed the beginning of that. Sorry, it's for Helpsy. It was the I sent an email earlier. Uh five percent. If we put if we add to our when we say pick get your curbside pickup or go to go to the uh the middle schools and we put information on there to say with Helpsy that that they have an online shopping. So they show you the, the um, clothing or other textiles that have been recycled. Um, it's, it's like eBay. So you, you just buy it online and 5% of whatever we put out there that people click on and purchase will go to the nonprofit of our choice. So they figure it's our way to you know, help them advertise. And so that's why they wanted to go to a nonprofit. Um, so tag, I said, I didn't hear back from pollinator pathway. It probably wouldn't be, the checks wouldn't be large enough to make it worth their while for doing a lot of little donations. And that's why I thought of uh, Reverend Sarah with Nourish, but I didn't know if anyone had any other thoughts uh, locally that they thought would be a good a good recipient. So if you do just shoot me an email or if you have one now, let me know. No, that looks like a really good group. They have that hydroponic farm there. Yeah. 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 She's, she's amazing if you don't know her. She's, she's just fabulous. She's one of those people that <laughs> and you want somebody to get you energized to do good, just listen to her for five minutes. She's she's fantastic. And yeah, the par the farm is amazing. George actually went out to take a look at that when they had the grand opening. Uh, we we're there for a fundraiser and, and she got everybody. I mean, they don't they got so much of donations, which is fantastic. Just listening to her speak and get the crowd going. So, you know, it's a it's a it's a great organization. So I figure, you know, yeah. I'd, I'd rather do that than than, you know, something that doesn't really benefit people as much as you'd like. Right. Yeah, this is great. 2,500 Thanksgiving meals, feast in a box. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I had, I had heard about her, but I haven't met her. I just, I'd heard about the farm. That looks like a good place for the money to go. Yeah. Hey, with me. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'll, I'll run it by Vicki and then see if, uh, if, if uh, she's, if she's interested. Okay, helps me. All right, so uh, if we're moving on. It's uh, we're talking about ten thousand trees for no, sorry, one thousand trees for trouble. We'll get to ten thousand eventually, but yes, thousand trees for trouble. What's happening there, Mel? We want to get those trees in the ground in spring. Is that right? Yep, ASAP. We want to get uh, at least the first group in. Um, so we have a meetings scheduled this Wednesday, a Zoom meeting with George. Okay, George. who's in that meeting? 
So it's George and uh, George Estrada, Tim, um, Tim Coughlin. Coughlin from Conservation Commission, yeah. uh, Dimitri and me. And I'm, I'm thinking, now I'm assuming Dimitri is the only one that didn't respond that, but George set up the meeting. Um, so Mary, if you, you know, like to come, I'm, I'm gonna, um, we're just gonna get George caught up on what we we're talking about. And I actually would like to invite um, Jeff um, Minder, Minder, who's the tree warden in Fairfield, um, to come again because we discovered that he is a Trumbull resident and he lives near the Long Hill Green. Um, so I think that was kind of a nice little gift to us that this tree warden who's very progressive and very smart happens to live here in Trumbull and you know maybe could volunteer his time with our tree initiative. So um, we have we have some details that we need to iron out with the placement of the trees. We still haven't decided upon um, town property or private property on the line. Uh, Fairfield is on um, town property. Um, folks in Trumbull right now are talking about it being on private property because they don't want to have to do maintenance going forward of these trees. So that's probably the most important thing that we have to iron out right now. So we'll probably talk about that on Wednesday. Um, so again, we have probably close to, we have $29,000, uh, 12 of it from the town, the others from donations. Um, so I think we could have a pretty good program. Uh, and, and again, we still have the $3,000 that um, I think would be great for a brochure to be sent out townwide this winter. You can't unchop a tree. Um, but hopefully we, if we have some details on this program, we can insert that into the, into the brochure. So, um, so that's, that's it. We had a really good meeting, uh, last month and I hope this Wednesday's meeting will also be good. So we can, I can keep you updated. One of the things that have been decided that we're, um, that are gonna, assuming this goes up forward, what are like? You have you chosen what kind of trees and uh, any kind of ideas on where you're going to place them in general, like uh, places that have had trees removed, or what's the what's the general plan as far as the whole thing? So the list of species um, we have we kind of have worked on uh, already. A uh, good majority of them will be uh, well, they will all be native trees. Um, and we, we're gonna have to have a variety of species so that you know we don't end up like we are now with all of the ash trees dying or all the sugar maples dying if we can you know alternate. So you know we do have to look at factors of resistance to the diseases and insects we're dealing with now. But um, they will be native trees. They will be of three different sizes. So higher canopy trees, moderate, or mid canopy trees and then smaller trees. And the way Fairfield does it is the, um, on the sides of the utilities, the smaller trees go there. On the side where there are no utilities, only high canopy trees can go. Like they will not allow you to put small trees on the non-utility side, which I think is very cool, brilliant, because it helps to recreate the canopy in a safe way because we're putting the right tree in the right place. So, um, you know, in an effort to keep Fairfield's, you know, canopy big or robust, the higher trees go on the non-utility side and the smaller trees go on the utility side. The medium ones can be, you know, like one step back from the um, utilities, but if they're gonna be closer to the utilities, they have to be the small trees. So um, that's the species and the size and the location. We kind of toyed with the idea of maybe starting um, on a commercial property that gets a lot of visibility and attention. So Long Hill Green, they've done a lot of sustainable stuff up at Long Hill Green, including permeable pavement, rain gardens, all that. Um, 
And while we iron out the location of public or private, if the private side turns out to be commercial, not like residential private, but commercial, um, we can work with the owner up there, the developer, Mike, Mike Serrata, um, and maybe talk to him going forward about let, you know, starting out with the placement of restoring the tree canopy in Long Hill Green, just to give people like a demonstration of, you know, a place that doesn't have any trees now <laughs> and really replanting the right tree in the right place up there. So that was just kind of an idea that came out of the last meeting and thought that might be an interesting thing is to start on a, a commercial property. Wouldn't go to Trumbull Center yet because they've still got, you know, they're gonna have some more construction going on there over the next couple of years, I hope. Um, but uh, Long Hill Green might be a good place to, to start this. It was also suggested that, um, you know, we'd have to prioritize the, the neighborhoods or the locations to start. Uh, and fa what Fairfield found very successful was to um, do like smaller communities, like the a lake community, for example, first, like what, what do they have, Mohegan? Is it Mohegan Lake? Yeah, yeah. Um, so they would start in an area like that, doing the program. So they're not spread out all over the place. So they're kind right. of, traded in neighborhoods. So which I think um, that's a good best practice that we can learn from Fairfield, how to do that smart in small clusters. This way, it's more visually has more of a visual impact when you do it in neighborhoods. Now, if, if it ends up being on private property or commercial property, I guess, is there um, who pays to actually, you know, put the tree in? plant well, a tree and whatever, whatever it, it, assuming that there's some cost to it, right? Yeah, so here's, here's the interesting thing. Fairfield's trees are put in on the public property. Uh, the private homeowner adjacent cost, um, is the one who decides that they want a tree there. They okay. pay $200 for the tree. They're responsible for the first year, like mulching it, watering it, blah, blah, blah. But from there on, the town takes responsibility for the tree. So it's really like a shared, um, kind of a shared initiative, which is, so the, the, you know, the cost of the, the town actually puts it in as well. Town puts the tree in, so it's done correctly. And we don't really, you haven't decided, or the town hasn't decided, because George and Dimitri and you are going to meet and hopefully decide how this is all going to play out. If you do it that way or some other way, yes. costs and all those things are still up in the air. Yes. So it's, uh, the average is, is um, I can't remember what they said, 200, 250. Um, when you add the maintenance in, it's a little more, maybe three to $400 per tree in terms of all told. Um, but in a sense, it's kind of subsidized, you know, by the town to reduce the costs because that's what our budget can go to is like subsidizing it, but the adjacent homeowner would um, potentially pay for it. I mean, if it's on the pri on their private property, of course they're going to pay for it, but I don't, you know, we haven't ironed those details out in terms of installing because Dimitri has said Trumbull's different from Fairfield in terms mm -hmm. of doesn't he live in Fairfield? He lives. Yes, he lives in Fairfield. Yeah. But, but the Fairfield tree warden lives in Trumbull. Right. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So, Mel, did I can't remember? Did did Fair? Did they say that we could um, uh, join in on their purchase for the spring with their fall purchasing to cut some of the cost? And then my next thing is, did um, did you? Uh, run this by Rena. I told you I had mentioned to her that that we did bring this up so she was aware. But um, since the Long Hill Green is in the capital plan and in ARPA, to finally get that last portion done, just to make sure that if that is the chosen spot, whatever goes in isn't going to be in an area that would then, you know, later be changed or, you know, I don't know if she has, if, if they had a plan developed at all for Long Hill for what the, you know, the any type of, of like small little lot, you know, like a green spots would be versus seating and things like that, or if it still was just up in the air and this is part of it. So you might want to, you know, okay. be either before or see if she wants to be in that meeting to uh, 
uh, just to make sure that we don't do something that then it's like, oh, wait, that's going to change now based on the plan that happens. That's a good idea. I've not spoken to her about it, um, but that is a really good idea. So yeah, so I'll find out after the meeting um, Wednesday if they want to go ahead with. Yeah, and I know something got brought up about um, development in town and Rena did pipe in saying that, uh, that, that, you know, there's a group coming up with putting more trees in. So I know obviously it's a, it's been, it's been a positive thing so far. So that's good. Yeah. And you know, what would be really cool to do also at Long Hill Green um, is to put uh, the wires underground. Um, I, I heard from Mary Hogan Fairfield, something about some strategies to, for, to doing that, bringing the infrastructure, the, the utilities underground, that would yeah. make a huge difference because right now, Long Hill Green, I mean, there's so many wires that crisscross there uh, where the actual green is. It looks that, like. that was actually one of the plans that Rena presented. It's on my kitchen table somewhere back there, but one of the plans that she presented um, originally when they started talking about it before they put in the permeable pavers and um, yeah. everything was done up there, and I, I looked because I was curious how much that that cost was. And it was, I mean, and that was years before the escalation. And I think it was about maybe 650 or 750,000 to do just spot areas. So it, it, it really is expensive and it's, it's uh, you know, something to be considered. But, um, you know, unfortunately, in, in, in the priorities of things, but it, but it definitely would make it look a lot nicer up there. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. I'll send you, I'll find that document and send you a picture of the, of what had been in that discussion. Okay. And um, that's great. And while we're on Long Hill Green, um, just to let you know, I did reach out to Michael Serrata and I heard back from him. He's the developer up there. And I guess he's still the owner of the property um, about their rain garden. And the rain garden now has signage, interpretive signage that explains what like this big bioswale, which only has grass in it. Um, and just, I kind of asked if he would be interested if we could help um, to replant that so that it's more of a robust pollinator rain garden, which is pretty easy to do. Um, and he did respond back that he would be interested. Could we send him, uh, you know, like a plant list and planting plan? So fabulous Pam, our new, um, Master Gardener uh, put together um, a great list for the rain garden with some pictures um, that she completed. And I have to send them over to Michael. I haven't done that yet. Um, but I thought that was a positive thing. We haven't spoken about who, you know, who will pay for it, how much it will cost, but at least we started the conversation um, that that would be a really cool demonstration site for people to see as, you know, a pollinator garden. Um, on the pollinator pa pathway, there's already kind of signage there. You can add a pollinator pathway sign on the pole. Um, so uh, it's good. The door's open and we're, we're talking about that, which is a good thing. So thank you to Pam, our master gardener, who, let's give Pam a hand. She is an official master gardener now. Got her certification. Do you have a... Oh, you have a oh, hat? What do you got? That. What is that? I got a scarf that my dog keeps grounding. Oh, and I have a certificate. Yes, here's Ellie now. Yes, Ellie. No, this is not yours. Yeah. Here's Ellie. Good to have oh, you. Oh, he's right here. Hi, Ellie. And uh, congratulations. I'm supposed to be getting a badge, but they forgot to order them. So, hmm. oh, cool. I'll yeah, get a badge at some point. <laughs> that would Thank be. You. Yeah, so that's great. So it's nice to have you being able to help in a pinch like this and come up with a really cool um, plan. So yeah. along that, Kevin, is there any way, and I'm sending this out, is there any way that, um, I know TNAC has been pretty active in what they've been doing and expanding, especially with some of the, the grant opportunities. Is that something that perhaps going forward, um, ish, you know, areas that are not on the TNAC property, but that they might be interested in getting involved in? And, um, you know, I know like Amazon and, um, oh my gosh, Henkel, uh, they were doing their cleanup days and volunteering. So just wondering if, you know, things like that, which are prominent in the community, they might be interested in helping with. Are you talking about um, planting trees or? 
And just just in some of the like even to we put this in and then there's other areas for planting like small pollinators or helping with like a rain garden to add. Um, you know, I'm sure they don't want to do it on other people's commercial property, but on town property, if we're going that route, I just thought it might be, you know, same thing like an education of like, I mean, I would have no idea how to do like what's in a rain garden. How do you do it? But it might just be some, you know, a fun, fun project classroom type activity but in other areas that benefit the town. And of course, Pam's in charge. So it's very right. easy. And Pam so. can help because Pam's our associate uh, of, of everything, including TNAC. Yep. Um, yeah, so that's a thought. We actually kind of, there was a rain garden in the front of TNAC, but uh, it wasn't really working all that well. Um, kind of tore out a bunch of the stuff, but it's still, I mean, it's sort of a, a rain garden by default. Stuff flows, it, water flows off the roof and goes in there. Uh, but we don't we don't have a, a rain a, like an official rain garden per se. But uh, that's something I'm gonna I can bring up. I was wondering if you wanted any trees planted. If it made sense to plant any trees um, at Teenac along the roadway or anything like that. So I don't know. I have to talk to Mark Sinari particularly. He's uh, he kind of decides he has a lot of in, insight into where, where where trees might be best. Um, and what trees come out because we've got a lot of invasives too. So uh, maybe replace some of the invasives with some of the, um, if there's enough trees to go around, I don't even know if there are. So let me look into that though. Short okay. answer. Let me look into um, that. So Kevin, is is Mark um, a, a, a licensed arborist? Do you know? I don't think so. He might've been at one time, but I don't think he is now. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I just wondered, I couldn't remember. He was always so so smart about trees. So. Uh, he's smart about everything. He's, he's smart about everything. We just yeah. like <laughs> Ranger Mark. Yeah, Ranger Mark. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, that's good. Pam, I mean, uh, Mary Ellen, let, let us know how that meeting goes on okay. Wednesday. And we're interested to see you. Will do. Things. So, uh, yeah. So, Mary and Pam, I'll send you if you guys want to just jump on and listen in. Um, I'd like to, because uh, you know, this is something that I I'm, I think is a really important initiative. I'd love to yes. listen in, and and I hoping to be encouraged. By yeah, encouragement would be nice. Okay. Yeah, that's always good to have. All right, thank you very much. And so the last uh, items that I have are regarding outreach, and we have the first uh, bullet is web page updates and revisions. And Mari, you already mentioned, I think, uh, adding the list of collectibles at the monthly drive to the town website. Um, yes, so can I add on that? Um, yeah, sure. Pam, you and I kind of individually emailed about that, that we don't like the Google sheet that we have there um, as a link to the full list. Um, do you want to work on that with me going forward, yeah. Pam? I don't want to give Absolutely. you a project, but okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know that we need pictures of every item. Yeah. So if you're taking, for instance, all brands of toothpaste, yeah. you don't okay. really need a picture of that. But if there is something that requires an image to explain. So I'm happy to help with that. I've got okay. programs that I can use. I'm, I'm not a graphic designer per se, but I'm <laughs> just updating. Um, and then I have, you know, a couple other web page revisions and then Mary, I can hand it over to you if you want, if I missed any, but the one thing I noticed on our web page um, under the transfer station, well, I think you brought this one up, Mary, is the glass. We had, we gave a lot of content on the glass and I think it was intended maybe to be a link um, after we just had a, for a, the initial overview of the program, but it all got inserted in there. I think it's too bulky. Um, Even if like it's that where you do more and the dot, 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 and if you click on it, it expands it. But because, yeah, if we just kept scrolling for glass for so long, people yeah. think that's the end of the page. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a lot of the why and everything else. And it can also be an additional link to a document we provide if, if that's easier for whoever posts. And then on the base state um, or under the textile tab, um, I noticed we don't have a link to base state and what they collect. Um, we just list what's accepted. And I think their website is phenomenal. It's very comprehensive. I'd like to add that link there, just a simple thing. But um, I do notice under our reduce, reuse, recycle, 
main heading, I think the first few are the key. The transfer station is the first one. Then it goes to the monthly recycling drive. Then it has like plastic film and textiles. And then it kind of has all these other resources that we originally years ago probably thought were really important. I just hope it doesn't it seem cluttered or disorganized. And I kind of feel like it does personally. I feel like sometimes the main few headings should be more visible. Maybe we can group a few of those others together as like additional resource recycling options or something. Um, but um, just kind of wanted, to, I know I have all these ideas too, and then the days and weeks go by and I don't get to drafting something that, so do we want to just maybe draft a heading list and circulate it? Um, and see what we think. Does that sound good? Hmm. I think it's a, a good idea to invite people to converse with us too. If you don't see it here, feel free to email us or something like that. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we'll click on the reduce, reuse, recycle tab and then see what we think, make up some headings that we think are a little uh, more current for what we want to have visible. and. Yeah, I, I asked Bill last week to make a couple of changes to the events tab because we still had Earth Week there. Yeah. And, you know, we really don't have many events. Um, we we listed our farmers market table, but that's over now. So. And the Trumbull Sustainable Youth tab is now um, not date specific. It's just the link and the meeting list is a. a editable list that's a link, not just on the page itself. Amari, quick question on all the links on the transfer station. Has the URL changed at all? Or are they still linked to the transfer station main page? The transfer station main page is the same. So yes, that okay. wouldn't get edited. I think that's a town um, owned link. So I think that's great for you know moving forward with the codes and stuff. Um, I think it would be like little sub sub tabs that we would be looking to edit. Right? Yeah, as long as they're linked off of that page, yep. that'd be fine. And I was up at the transit station last week. I just asked them if anybody's looking at the QR codes and they said, yeah, people are stopped by to scan. I didn't get any metrics on that. Okay. But the idea is when they scan it, if when we add new, you know, waste streams and recycling streams, if they're linked then that will, you know, be maintained the communication for the future. That's really great. Yeah, so does the town uh, page for the transfer station, what is, does that have links back to any of our stuff too, or what, how does that work? Uh, the QR links to uh, the page that has, you know, recycling and everything we're talking about. Right. So it's the one where you can get there and then click on transfer to... station, see what they're taking, and click on the other streams that Myrie's talking about. As long as the okay. URL doesn't change, I and mean, we can add additional links to that page, but the QR only links to the you know that one URL. Right. Anyway, so I'm, I was just wondering if the town we're linking. So if people go to to the town page under sustainability, right? Then they they can click over. They go to reduce, reuse, recycle, and they can click on there, and they can get to the town. Uh, transfer station site, right? Is that right, Mari? Yes, and I'm looking at the transfer station site, and there is right. not a link back to the reduce, reuse, recycle. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Website. Should there be? It, can we get that done? I think we should because that's a great point. Because I think the only place we would see that is maybe in the quick links um, on the side. Once you click on the document, what's in, what's out, it might be or facts. I think it's in the facts thing, but that's way too many steps back. Yeah, people aren't usually going there. I think I at don't. the bottom, even like every, all other, you know, items, something like that. Like you want one or more info on more recycling, go back to the sustainable page. I think yeah, that would be that a would great. Be, that would be good. And that would great be, idea. I don't know, yeah. we ask Bill for that or to help yeah. us with that. Is that how that works? Yeah. Well, why don't we make a draft of the, the handful of changes we'd like to see and we can circulate with the team before we request it? How does that sound? Sure, that's good to me. All right. Try not to fall off the earth, Mary, good, good on that plan. one. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. So how's, oh, so you mentioned uh, sustainable youth. How is everything, uh, how's, how's things going with TSY? 
Okay, so yeah, I have a quick update. They're meeting this evening. Um, we officially had a head of social media, so that's great. Um, they are uh, working on um, planning a fundraiser food drive um, before the holidays. They're getting involved in the upcoming legislation. Um, we do have a few new students that are um, joining. So hopefully with that momentum, they'd like to do a little advocacy on getting rid of styrofoam um, right here in town at the, um, with the Board of Ed. So that was a few things on their agenda. And of course, they're always working monthly on helping at the recycling drive and cleanup. So always awesome. looking how's for the, new students though. <laughs> sorry, how, how's, yeah. the, um, how's the uh, attendance or participation rate? Is it going up or down or? We're adding, we're, I think we have about three new students that have joined. So hopefully that's Good. enough to get a few of the initiatives moving forward, so. Nice. It was a slow start in the fall, to be honest. So. Yeah. So you wanted to, so one of the things that we're going to is removing styrofoam from the uh, from cafeteria. the cafeterias. Yes. School cafeterias. Okay. I'm just taking my notes. Okay, good. Um, super. All right, and then let's see school updates. Did you get some? of those from uh, April? I do, and I will combine those with what um, Brianna at the Environmental Club reported back to me, which they kind of overlap. So Trex uh, recycling at the schools officially started, starts tomorrow, November 15th is the start of the program collection. And um, Trumbull High School is collecting and April reported she has Hillcrest and Middlebrook also confirmed collecting. It was for what did you say? School. I'm sorry. I was for the plastic film with Trex. Okay. They've, they've all entered each school. Um, oh, oh, is that all the schools, all of them? All um, Just nine? the ones listed. Trumbull High, Hillcrest, and Middlebrook. Okay, so high and, and middle schools. I'll double okay. check with Madison. They've done it in the past to see if they're participating. Okay. But I can email you a list after, so you don't have to. That's fine them. if you want, but that's. Um, and then also um, Hillcrest Middle School started um, collecting, again, pens and markers. Um, through BIC and Trumbull High is looking to do that again as well. Um, so okay. both of those two schools. And then um, the Environmental Club at Hillcrest Middle School started up. I think April texted us that they did a cleanup um, last week and they're looking to possibly collect the chip bags with Subaru, but we have to confirm if that's gonna um, again, work out with Subaru's um, guidelines and whatnot and what they can handle and accommodate. So there's an environmental um, club at Hillcrest. Is that a new thing? That club? is, yes. I think April is heading that up. So. Oh, okay. Huh, yeah, there you go. Uh, there she works. <laughs> and um, the One environmental club at the high school is also doing um, modification of some TerraCycle collections. They're still shaking out exactly which items um, in addition to the BIC that they're going to start collecting. Um, they might collect some of the toothpaste um, oral care products and cosmetic type products. So that's exciting. Now, did you say that Brianna's in the environmental club? At Trumbull High, yes. She's okay. the president. Oh, she's president of that and she's also in the Y, -Y, -Y TSY, sorry. Yes. Of course, great. <laughs> All right. On the one thing on the school front, I have been um, sending to one or two board of ed members to see if they would be interested in sitting in, you know, said for like EV sending yeah. to them. And then also there's the um, the food the cafeteria food waste, which is coming up. I don't think it's till January, but I did forward that on. And, um, you know, because the Board of Ed isn't talking about any of these items at all. So I think that it would okay. be helpful if they can start, you know, having having these discussions at their end as well to, you know, either support and, uh, you know, or to come to their own, because I know it's, uh, you know, it's, it was tricky over the last few years, but now that hopefully we're back to normalcy, we can start getting some of these, you know, bigger areas rolling too. Yeah, the food scrap collection is being done. I think I shared the pilot or um, implementation in West Hartford. They're really proactive up there where the schools separate the food scraps. Um, we have a Trumbull mom who works in Westport who was very interested in separating compost at Trumbull schools, but it has to be hauled away as far as I understand. There's not gonna be a compost on site pile. So 
it's it's a budget thing, right? I mean, it just right. comes down to, and um, we do hear from um, a, another group on in that the elementary level is the place to pilot and start and see, because kids are very trainable and enthusiastic at that level. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, but I'm this might... happy to provide information and resources if somebody at the Board of Ed wants to go forward with it. Yeah, and this this would even be even the type the the smaller type things where um and again I don't I'm not sure if that's what this you know this discussion is per se but the easy things of, of you know you don't drink three quarters of your milk and you throw it out in the garbage can so it's to get the get the liquids out of out of the trash um the the those containers are recyclable I don't know if the schools are recycling them or just keeping them all in trash uh, the give and take so fruit items and things like that that could be picked up by kids that, you know, same thing we used to always see, they have to take your apple, you know, your fruit when you're in elementary school and they don't want it and they throw it out. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of towns that are doing that where they add that, that area. So kids, you know, they may not have that ability to have as much at home as, as, as one would think. And, and it's a nice thing, or they're just hungry, you know, and grab it, but, but it's definitely, it's worked in other schools. So it would be nice to, you know, try to pilot something, whatever, I know, I know the bigger things are a time coming, but if whatever we can start getting in, I think would be, you know, would be, would be useful. All right. Is uh, anything else on the schools or uh, outreach there? Good. So I have uh, the last item that I have on the list is the um, following up on the presentation to the Economic Community Development Commission, and I'm, I'm sure Ralph was there, and Mel, you were there. How, what was that? Uh, yes. Anybody who else wants to comment on, certainly both of be interested to hear uh, feedback from, from anybody who was there, so. Yeah, Ralph, if you, Ralph, if you want to go ahead, um, I, I thought it was pretty good, and I'm very thankful to Ralph for setting that up. Um, I think Sarah did a nice job. They really, um, I think, liked the presentation. There was um, um, a question about the participants, um, making sure everybody that participated in the survey was a Trumbull resident. Um, and that was a good question. So Sarah went back and, you know, re, um, you know, clean the data and took out people who were not Trumbull residents. Says there are people who just like work in Trumbull that answered it, or um, mm -hmm. and the outcomes, so the data outcomes were not any different um, as okay. she predicted. But it was good. People were, you know, they seemed very interested. So um, I thought it was it was really a good opportunity um, to kind of cross pollinate some commissions. That was really good. So what do you think as far as t using that information, that data, uh, Ralph, particularly and, and since you're a long time or member of that commission, uh, what uh, your thoughts are? What I've, uh, what I've suggested to the commission is a series of steps to keep the relationship going. Uh, first, thanks again uh, for the presentation, it was great. Um, and I've compiled a list of ideas that I have to uh, help us work a little closer together. And if you'd like, I'll send that to you and you can circulate it. Oh, One of the ideas is, uh, is to have a little um, column in our newsletter, quarterly newsletter from this group as to what's going on. So it's just another outreach opportunity. Um, so anyway, there are half a dozen or so ideas that, uh, I'll forward to you and you can share with the, the committee. Uh, again, to try and keep uh, everyone on our commission informed and involved as appropriate and publicize good ideas. Great. So the commission has a quarterly newsletter, is that right? Well, we, yes, but it's fallen, I think, on hard times. Okay. Of, uh, I guess COVID. I was going to say, that's a, that's a bit of an undertaking. We don't have our we don't have a quarterly newsletter. It's well, you, work, right? Yeah, Kevin, if you go look on the economic site, you'll see when they were doing them. So it's listed on the side. Okay. And they're really well done. So Ralph, it'll be great if those do come back. Uh, they're just, yeah, they, they really have so much information. And, uh, uh, you know, it's it, it, 
it was a useful tool. Well, I'm, I'm pushing to get them back. And uh, I think there's room for your work in our newsletter as appropriate, which will just, again, broaden the awareness of what your group is up to. Just another communications outlet. Super. Did you get a, any feel for any of the, what issues were more or less um, interesting to the, anybody on the, anybody else on the commission? No, Maybe. not yet, because uh, the next step was to formulate a list of uh, ways to work together. And then the commission's going to respond to that. So um, I just need, I need, found the need to tease something up to, to push them a little bit. I mean, they're very so, polite, um, but in order to have a more formal working relationship, it takes a little prodding. Right. Now, when you say working together, you're talking about not only the ECDC, but also Conservation Commission and Sustainable, the three groups? Or sure. Even you know, the more the merrier. Anything okay. that relates to the ECDC charter as it relates to community development, I think should be at a minimum engaged in an awareness campaign, uh, volunteering to help you all out as appropriate, and uh, just publicizing your good work. And uh, we do have a somewhat dormant vehicle in this newsletter, which I've not only pushed to restore it, but to proactively distribute it. I don't know why we can't send that out proactively as opposed to just having it on the website, but I'll find out. I just think transparency and information sharing is a good idea and you never know what's gonna come of it. Great. All right, so who's who's involved in that uh, plan to formulate ways to work together? Is there any specific people working on that? Is Sarah, Mel, Ralph? Uh, all, um, all I did was develop my own ideas to make sure the commission kept uh, the presentation and the concepts alive. If I send that to, and the commission approved, not approve is too strong. They, they agreed with the ideas, um, but I, I guarantee you, if if I don't keep bringing them up, things like that tend to go away. Right. So uh, I just want to keep keep it alive, and 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 I told them I would update you all and ask for your input as well. So I'll get another turn at bat here with additional ideas, and uh, we'll keep going. Super. All right. Do we know if the uh, restaurant flyer that Mari and I worked on went out to the restaurants? Farina? And she said she was going to send it, but I'm not sure if anybody knows if it went out. And we could just shoot a little follow up just to see if she's gotten any responses or had any questions for us. And then that would, if she forgot to send it, it would be like a polite prompt. Do you want me to do that or do you want to do it? Sure, either way, yeah. Just a quick follow-up to see how it went kind of thing. But I think that would be okay, right? That was October 25th, so I think enough time has passed you can follow up. Yeah. It might be just a busy time for anybody that does have questions to reach out, but hopefully they will. All right, anybody else have any thoughts or questions on the uh, this new collaboration? Growing collaboration. All right, I, that's that's all I have on my agenda. Is it anybody else, uh, any other issues? I gotta get out of here. If people raise their hands, by the way, I almost never see it. So, cause I'm busy typing, so. Kevin? <laughs> yes. There you are, Janice got her hand up. Yeah, I, I, this, this is this. I don't know if this is um, a low or a high hanging fruit item, but you, um, you were talking about the QR codes, and um, I finally had an opportunity to actually use one of them, and they're certainly chock full of information. I think it was the old Mind Park one, but there are an awful lot of typos, and I don't know if that bothers anybody. Um, oh. It bothers me. <laughs> But it may not bother anybody else. But I just thought, you know, 
I like to put our best foot forward. So I don't know if, um, I don't know how many QR codes there are and I there's a lot of writing. So, um, but I'm just putting it out there. Okay, it's good to know. I'm, a, I'm a, I like to proofread stuff. Pam, you, you're probably a proofreader too, if I, have, if I were to guess. Yes. <laughs> Here's a quick comment yeah. on that. Uh, yeah, those, the information is from the original source. All we are allowed to do is link to it. And that's from historical, you know, so whatever they have was probably written maybe tens of years ago. Oh. That, that's a good point. Hmm. Um, but the town wants us to use what's existing. And so we get what we get. Huh. Maybe we can this, get them to change. Maybe they can get get them to update it. If yeah, good, good point. Time. I'll um, I've got an email into Nancy. I'll suggest that to her because Historical was going to do some more with QR codes, and I don't know if they do that offline or what. But I haven't heard for about two months now. And with well, Richard, you can about. offer my services as a former publishing person. I'm happy to look over whatever if they want. They need help. Uh, or any copy editing, grammar, or punctuation. And Jen, as far as the QR codes, we have them just to add three parked locations, the transfer station. And then historical, you know, has some opportunities and then whatever the town wants to do in the future, but we have, you know, unlimited opportunities. And also I can see a QR code going in at Long Hill, you know, once we've upgraded that, you know, once we have a sign, then the QR can link to more information about rain gardens and, and things like that. Janet, did you say, did you see uh, in any other places where there were a bunch of typos other than the Old Mine Park one, or was there any others? That's just the first one that I've actually had been near. <laughs> so, okay. so I, I looked at it and there's an awful lot of information, but I can understand that it may be, you know, is dated. You know, it didn't look like it was contemporary writing, but there are a lot of mistakes. Hmm. If Richard, would that be on the Parks and Rec? I don't remember um, on their agenda if you had put um, if you'd put the QR, the the picture of the QR code, so we can just kind of zoom in on it and read it without having to go to the park. Um. Yeah. Let's see. Let me go to. Um... Or we could we could look offline. I just couldn't remember. Yeah, just if you send it to us that. offline. We'll take a look. We'll take a gander at it and. Do a proofread on it, whoever wants to. Okay, you know to what I'll do is I'll email everybody the QR codes we currently have out there. Okay. And people, you know, can make comments, you know, whatever you, you might want to do. But Janet brings up a good point. You know, we aim for perfection. And maybe we get there some point for 80% or 90% or whatever. Yeah. One of my pet peeves, though. I'm I'm in. Yeah, me too. I, I catch every typo there is. So, yeah. If, if you put an apostrophe in a plural, I'm coming after you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's part of our mission. Thank God for spell check. I'm a perfectionist, but spell check helps me a whole lot. Yeah. All right, everybody. Anything? Any other uh, questions, comments before we head out? All right. Well, I appreciate everybody's work and uh, good to see you all. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. 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 You can believe that. Yeah, pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. real soon. Hey, maybe flurries tonight, maybe. Um, um, wonderful. Oh, well. All right, yes. everybody. Thanks, thanks again. Thanks, everyone. Okay, goodbye, everybody. Thank you. See you later. Thanks, Bill. Bye. Yeah, thanks, Bye. Bill.